Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by the surface area to volume ratio of a cell or organism. You should then be able to calculate the surface area to volume ratio. And finally, you should be able to explain why having a small surface area to volume ratio can present problems for living organisms. OK, I'm showing you here a unicellular or single celled organism. This is actually a species of amoeba, and we find this in freshwater ponds. Now, all organisms are constantly exchanging materials with their environment. For example, this amoeba carries out aerobic respiration to generate ATP, and the oxygen needed for aerobic respiration diffuses into the cell through the cell membrane. Scientists call the cell membrane an exchange surface. When an amoeba carries out aerobic respiration, it produces a gas carbon dioxide. And again, this carbon dioxide diffuses out of the cell through the cell membrane. Now, in microscopic organisms such as amoeba, the organism can exchange all the substances it needs directly through the cell membrane. And there are two reasons for this. Firstly, microscopic organisms such as an amoeba have a relatively low rate of respiration. That's because amoeba are not very active organisms. Secondly, the surface area of the cell membrane of an amoeba is relatively large compared to the volume of the cell. Scientists call this the surface area to volume ratio. We calculate the surface area to volume ratio using this equation. The surface area to volume ratio is the surface area divided by the volume. We're going to calculate the surface area to volume ratio for different sized cells. I'm showing you here two different cells. I've made these cells cube shaped to make our calculations easier. Looking at the cell on the left, each side has a length of 2 micrometers. However, with the cell on the right, each side has a length of 4 micrometers. I'm going to calculate the surface area to volume ratio of the cell on the left. To work out the surface area of each side, we multiply the length by the height. Multiplying 2 micrometers by 2 micrometers gives us a surface area of 4 micrometers squared for each side. There are 6 sides, so the total surface area is 4 multiplied by 6, which is 24 micrometers squared. The volume is the length multiplied by the height multiplied by the depth. 2 micrometers multiplied by 2 micrometers multiplied by 2 micrometers gives us a volume of 8 micrometers cubed. The surface area to volume ratio is the surface area divided by the volume. Dividing 24 by 8 gives us a surface area to volume ratio of 3 to 1 for the smaller cell. I'd like you now to calculate the surface area to volume ratio of the larger cell. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, the area of each side is 4 micrometers multiplied by 4 micrometers, which is 16 micrometers squared. Multiplying this by 6 gives us a total surface area of 96 micrometers squared. The volume is 4 micrometers multiplied by 4 micrometers multiplied by 4 micrometers, which is 64 micrometers cubed. Dividing 96 by 64 gives us a surface area to volume ratio of 1.5 to 1. So as you can see, although a larger cell has a greater surface area than a smaller cell, a larger cell also has a much greater volume as well. This means that the surface area to volume ratio actually decreases as cells get larger. Now, we can apply this same concept to organisms. Going back to our amoeba, single-celled organisms have a relatively large surface area to volume ratio. And as we saw before, they can transfer all of the chemicals they need across the cell membrane. However, with larger multicellular organisms, their surface area to volume ratio is much smaller. Some small multicellular organisms do rely on diffusion across their body surface, and a good example is this flatworm. By evolving a very thin and flat body shape, all of the cells in the flatworm are close to the surface. So diffusion across the body surface is sufficient in a flatworm. However, in larger multicellular organisms, the surface area to volume ratio is simply too small. So what this means is that most multicellular animals have evolved two specialised systems to compensate. 
Firstly, they have a specialised gas exchange surface with a very large surface area, for example lungs in mammals and gills in fish. Secondly, they have a specialised transport system to carry molecules around their body, for example blood. In this topic, we'll be looking in much more detail at both of these systems. OK, so hopefully now you can calculate the surface area to volume ratio and explain why this is important for living organisms.